Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be part one in what will be a multi-part series where I design and build a guitar tube amplifier from scratch. Uh, the goal of this build at outset is kind of aimless. Basically, um, you can see I got a whole bunch of stuff here. It's kind of a mess. Whenever I start a project, I tend to kind of get everything out and kind of go from there. But I'm not ordering any kind of kit, and I'm also not necessarily basing this off of any particular circuit. What I'm trying to do is take some of the parts that I've accumulated and see if I can put it together into a guitar amp that I like. Um, again, using a lot of the parts that I've just kind of accumulated uh, through other builds or teardowns or that I found on sale for really cheap, and just see if I can make it into something. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a little bit of an inventory here of all the parts that I've got and then we will see what direction that takes us in. Uh, so starting off here, obviously, we've got this chassis. This is a 5E3 style chassis. I got it really cheap, like, it was, yeah, really, really cheap on some blowout sale. Um, all aluminum, and it's really, you know, meant for a standard 5E3 type setup. So this would be the, f the front. Um, you've got your four hole input, which I don't really like or use, um, but that's what it's got. Then we've got what would be a volume, volume, tone, I guess, type setup. Switch, power indicator, um, I think maybe both sides have a tone control. I'm blanking right now on what a stock 5e3 Deluxe has, because I only have my modded one. Um, and then on the back... Uh, I actually added in a hole here, but it typically would have two uh, 12 or two preamp valves. Here's our speaker out, power output, and our tube rectifier. Um, but I've kind of already kind of gotten started a little bit here. So, anyways, that's the chassis we're working with. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty small. I'm going to be using a point-to-point -point wiring setup, so actually a smaller chassis is fine. Um, and actually it's kind of nice that, you know, the run from like the input jack to, to the first preamp tube in here really isn't quite so massive. So, uh, everything is really okay with it being a little bit smaller just because of what I'm going to do. And it's not going to be a crazy amp. It's not going to have reverb or tremolo or multi-channel. It's just going to be a really straight, straightforward vintage style amp. Um, so yeah. Next, I've got this big power transformer. It's got marking 12676-1549-6040. Don't know what that means, but uh, as far as power transformers go, it's not the largest that I've ever seen. I'd say it's pretty similar in size to my 5E3 Tweed Deluxe power transformer. Uh, so that's good. The eBay auction I bought it on, I think I had it for like 30 bucks. Uh, it said that it could power uh, push-pull 6V6s or maybe a single-ended 6L6. Uh, kind of area, so pretty suitable for a Tweed Deluxe type amp. Um, so that's kind of the initial general direction we're going to go in. Um, now I have had some discussions on the TDPRI forum, which I will link down below. There was a lot of really interesting stuff there. I learned a ton about a power transformer, what the different windings do, and how they, um, basically what kind of circuit I could potentially build with this power transformer. Because of its specs, I had some limitations. So I will probably go through that in a future video. Um, next, this is an output transformer. Um, and it's got this cover. That came from my Hammond AO29 Plexi conversion where I upgraded the output transformer. Um, it actually might be perfect for this build. I'm not going to have quite as high of a B+. Plus. We're running 6v6s, probably a tube rectifier more of a vintage type amp. So, um, you know, the original AO29 ran 6v6s in push-pull. So, I, I really think it's going to be a nice fit. It's, it's, it's a smaller output transformer. It doesn't have quite as much headroom. It also doesn't have a ton of secondary options for different cabs. But as long as I can get an 8-ohm output, I, I really will be fine. And so we're going to give it a shot, see if we can make some use of it. Um, but also note that if I don't love the way the build sounds or I want to go in a different direction, that's something that I can always get, you know, something different with. Uh, and then from there, you know, I just got a whole bunch of other parts. Um, I did order some parts already, but for the most part, I'm just trying to empty out my parts drawer as best I can. And, um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of give an introduction of this. 
And uh, I think the next video I'm going to probably go through my schematic and also the TDPRI thread to kind of give an indication of how I got to the point that I'm at. So anyways, if you guys are interested in this build, stick along. If you got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I'll see you soon. Bye.